this Christmas time Consider well and bear in mind What our good God for us has done In sending His beloved Son With Mary holy we should pray To God with love this Christmas day in Bethlehem upon that morn There was a blessed Messiah born <clears throat> The night before that happy tide The noble virgin and her guide Were long time seeking up and down To find a But mark how all things came to pass From every door replied alas As long foretold the refuge all Was but a humble lot in stall Near Bethlehem did shepherds keep their flocks of lambs, keep their flocks of lambs and feeding sheep, to whom God's angels did appear, which put the shepherds in great fear. Prepare and go, the angels said, to Bethlehem be not afraid, for there you'll find this happy morn, a princely babe, sweet Jesus born. With thankful heart and joyful mind, the shepherds went the babe to find. And as God's angel had foretold, they did our Savior Christ behold. Within a manger he was laid, and by his side the Attending on the Lord of life Who came on earth to end all strife Well, Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas to all of you who are here, all of you listening on the radio or watching on Facebook Live. We hope that you are safe and warm and healthy wherever you are, and God bless us. Uh, thanks to everyone who makes worship possible. We've had a lot of comings and goings yesterday afternoon and last night, and then again today, complete turnaround. Um, so thanks especially to Rick, who came in after worship last night to help get things ready. and just the wonderful musicians we have. I mean, our choir is, any other church would be happy just to have this choir. Um, we, are, we have Rachel and Mark and Barb and Jan on the flute and so many other wonderful um, musicians and singers. So we're just really, really blessed. Just a reminder, um, there's no fellowship after worship today, nor is there fellowship after worship next week. Um, fellowship will return when we kind of get back to our regular schedule in January. Um, next week will be our Lessons and Carols, or as I like to call it, Bells and Whistles um, service, and um, Pastor Lane will be leading that. Um, thank you, thank you, thank you for all of your year-end gifts. We are very, very close to making the year. Um, year-end gifts are due in the office on Wednesday, the 28th. Um, and again, we thank you to, to all of you who've been bringing in gifts throughout this month. Um, we are able to do so many things with those gifts, um, all of our ministries. But um, as we all know, we had a severe tragedy in town this week. And so Trinity will be taking gifts 
to our Good Samaritan Fund directed to all of those affected by the fire through the end of this week, and longer if we have to, but specifically through the end of this week, um, this coming week. And so um, thank you for the ones that have already come in. Many people have been generous already, as well as in other areas. And so um, thank you for that. Poinsettias, thanks to everyone who brought the poinsettia. If you brought a poinsettia, you are welcome to take your poinsettia home after worship today. Frankly, we have a hard time keeping them alive here at church because we kind of forget. And so um, it's probably better for the poinsettia if you bring it home. Um, and I think that's it for announcements. So let's all take a deep cleansing breath. Let's breathe in the Spirit of God. Breathe out all our cares. Worship begins with confession and forgiveness. Please stand as you are able. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, love from the beginning, word made flesh, breath of heaven. Amen. Let us confess our sinfulness before God and one another, trusting in God's endless mercy and love. Merciful God, we confess that we are not perfect. We have said and done things we regret. We have tried to earn your redeeming grace while denying it to others. We have resisted your call to be your voice in the world. Forgive us, loving God. Give us your righteousness, the strength to put aside our failures, and the courage to try again. Amen. Dear people of God, hear the good news. Christ the Savior is born. You are loved and forgiven in the name of Jesus, who has come among us. You are freed from proving that you deserve to be loved, because God's love is given to you as the most precious gift of all. Rejoice in this love and share it with the world. Amen. Our first hymn is number 275, Angels from the Realms of Glory. the prayer of the day found in your bulletin. All-powerful and unseen God, the coming of your light into our world has brightened weary hearts with peace. Call us out of darkness and empower us to proclaim the birth of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated.
Read responsibly Psalm 97 as found in your bulletin. The Lord is King. Let the earth rejoice. Let the many coastlands be glad. Fire goes before him and consumes his adversaries on every side. <coughs> The mountains melt like wax before the Lord, before the Lord of all the earth. The heavens proclaim his righteousness, and all the peoples behold his glory. All worshippers of images are put to shame, those who make their boast in worthless idols, all gods bow down before him. Zion hears and is glad, and the towns of Judah rejoice because of your judgment so bad. For you, O Lord, are most high over all the earth. You are exalted far above all gods. But the Lord loves those who hate evil. He guards the lives of his faithful. He rescues them from the hand of the wicked. Light dawns for the righteous and joy for the upright in heart. Rejoice, Rejoice the Lord, the righteous, and give thanks to his holy name. The Gospel of the Incarnation for Christmas Day comes from John 1, verses 1 through 14. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. 
He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him, and without him not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overtake it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light. The true light, which enlightens everyone, was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world came into being through him, yet the world did not know him. He came to what was his own, and his own people did not accept him. But to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave power to become children of God, who were born not of blood or of the will or of the flesh or of the will of man, but of God. And the word became flesh and lived among us, and we have seen his glory, the glory as of a father's only son, full of grace and truth. This is the gospel of our Lord. And grace and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and our Savior, Christ Emmanuel, who is God with us. Let's begin with a word of prayer. Lord God, may your word become flesh through our lives so that we and all around us may see you in the fullness of your glory. In your name we pray, amen. For um, many years, as you guys know, um, I worked as a writer in advertising. And um, one of the first questions that we always asked when we were getting ready to do a big project, whenever our team was starting something was, what's the story? What do people need to hear about this product or service that will make them want to buy it or use it or know how to use it? What's the most important thing we need to know to make sure that our audience doesn't forget? Now, when it comes to the story of Jesus and especially the story of his birth, each of the gospel writers had a particular part of the story of Jesus that they thought was the most important. Now, for Matthew, it was genealogy. It was important for Matthew, or mostly for Matthew's audience at the time he was writing, that Jesus was the authentic, the true Messiah that they had been hoping for for so many years, descended from the royal line of David. They needed to know that Jesus was the real deal. Now, the writer of Mark's gospel, on the other hand, begins with uh, the proclamation of John the Baptist and the baptism of Jesus as a grown-up. And then he rushes right into the details of Jesus' ministry. Luke's gospel, which we used yesterday and last night, reminds us of Jesus' humble beginnings, born in a stable, visited by shepherds, surrounded by sheep. But it's the writer of John's gospel that seeks to remind us that Jesus is Emmanuel, God with us not just a human baby, not just the long-awaited Messiah, not just the authentic Messiah, but God in the flesh as an actual human being, but still God, God with us. There is really nothing more important. There's nothing really more significant or more profound or really anything that takes your breath away more than the idea that we celebrate Christmas because God came to be with us. God came to be with us. Christmas is when we celebrate and proclaim that God came to be with us. God loved the world so much that God became human. God was born, and then not in a castle, but in a barn. God was born not in a big city, but in a tiny little town that was occupied by foreign invaders. God was born not like all of a sudden, but after nine real months of pregnancy, untold hours of labor, a Jewish teenager gave birth to a real human baby, and they called him Jesus because he came to save us. But first, he came to be with us, to experience what we experience as humans, to be one of us. These first few um, verses of John's gospel are perhaps some of the most beautiful passages in the Bible. My favorite book is John by far. My favorite passage in John is this, well, I shouldn't say that. I love the whole book of John. Let's go there. 
But this, these beautiful words um, tell us that the word became flesh and dwelt among us. Now, um, like when we're at seminary, they always talk about this as the incarnation. Um, but incarnation is kind of a hard to understand word. So let's bring it down another level. It's like texting, right? We all text. Um, it, we text in my family a lot over the last few years. Also, most of us have learned how to use Zoom a lot as well. Texting and Zoom are great, but let's face it, they're great for you know communicating some things, but for the personal touch, you need to be able to touch someone. You need to be there in person. In person is always, always, always better. So that's what God did. The texts and Zoom meetings that God was having with God's people were not getting through to us, and so God decided to visit us in person. And that is the incarnation. God in person as a human that we could relate to. This is kind of mind-blowing. I mean, God chose to become a human. God was so committed to the humans that God had created that God decided to come down and experience being human for God's self. But there's another way of looking at it. God created the world, water and light and plants and animals, and finally, God's most precious creation, human beings, made in God's own image, perfect. Not quite perfect, good, but not quite perfect. Those of you who have children um, probably can relate to this a little bit. The precious little one, so perfect, looking up at you for the first time after they've born, completely dependent on you for everything. And then the years pass, the kids become more independent, maybe a little more willful, toys get broken, arguments break out, it gets a little noisy. All of a sudden, we're not in the Garden of Eden anymore. And from the basement rec room, we hear, if you kids don't behave, I'm coming down there. That's how I think it happened. The word became flesh and dwelt among us because we were acting up. But still, if I were God, I would not choose to become flesh. I mean, couldn't this have been accomplished in some easier way? It's such a mystery and such a miracle because actually it couldn't happen any other way. God didn't use God's superpowers to magically transform us, to correct our behavior, because that wasn't working. And so instead, God became one of us. God came down to be with us, and so we have the stable and the manger. Now, I love words. Being a, having been a writer, I, I love words so much. And even small words, like prepositions, have an immense power. Now, prepositions for all of those um, of you who remember your English class, um, your English grammar are, and I quote from uh, Webster, words or group of words used before a noun, pronoun, or noun phrase to show direction, time, place, location, and most important of all, relationship. Prepositions are small words that mean a big deal in our relationship with God. Prepositions include words such as to and with and for. At Christmas, we celebrate a son given to us. To shows direction. God came to us as a free gift. At Christmas, we celebrate God, Emmanuel, God with us. With shows relationship. God came to be one of us, human, ready to experience all the pain and joy of being a human. And soon, all too soon, we will remember God for us, that Jesus in his humanness and his godliness died for us so that we might have life. But for today, for today, let's focus on with. The word becoming flesh is the most immense event in our history, indeed, in the history of creation because this incarnation changes the relationship that we have with God. The incarnation means that we can see and hear and know God in ways never before possible and frankly unimaginable in any other religion. As Christians, we are able to experience God's presence with us with every single one of our senses. We can see and hear the word of God. 
And in a few minutes, we'll all share in communion. We'll smell and tusk, touch and taste the word of God. We'll experience the mystery of the incarnation in bread and wine. Christmas is a time when we celebrate so many traditions. And as I look around the sanctuary here at Trinity, I can see so many of those traditions. The backdrop, the poinsettias, the lights, so many beautiful lights. Last night, the sanctuary at the eight o'clock service was filled with candles, each of us holding up one in one person, in, in unison. And today in John's Gospel, we read about the light that shines in the darkness that the darkness did not overcome. There is an old Jewish proverb that says, we should bolster the light rather than fight the darkness. We should bolster the light rather than fight the darkness. At the end of worship, when we recite the Lord's Prayer, I often think about all the churches where congregations are reciting the Lord's Prayer or sharing the Lord's table. This morning, in sanctuaries all over the world, millions and millions, actually billions of Christians are celebrating this same feast. They are listening to these same words. The word became flesh and dwelt among us. When we leave this beautiful sanctuary with all its beautiful lights, we each take some of that light with us. We bolster the darkness with the light of God in us. Millions of us, billions of us. The word became flesh and dwelt among us. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness cannot overcome it. And we are called to bolster the light. Merry Christmas. Amen. Our next hymn is number 295 of the Father's Love Begotten.
Worship continues with the prayers. With wonder and thanksgiving for Christ's coming into the world, we pray for the church, the life of the earth, and the whole human family. The church in every land makes a joyful noise to herald your coming, O God. We give thanks for poets, musicians, and hymn writers who give voice to your praise, and for all who lead the church's worship. Lord, in your mercy, receive our prayers. This day dawns with new hope for all living things, and from ocean depths to mountain peaks, the earth rejoices. Inspire in us an urgent zeal to protect the planet and renew its resources. Lord, in your mercy, receive our prayers. Bring heavenly peace to this world and an end to armed conflict. Raise up leaders in every nation who will honor human rights and establish equal justice for all people. Give courage to all who speak out against oppression and advocate for the powerless. Lord, in your mercy, receive our prayers. Guard the lives of any in danger, especially those who work to protect others. Lead any who are in desperate circumstances to sanctuary, help, and safety. Grant rest to the weary and soothe those who are troubled. And especially today, Lord, we ask for your consolation and mercy for those in our congregation, our community, and our families who are suffering in any way. For Linda Newgard, Rebecca Marshall, Pastor Bob Stoskopf, Sharon Hansen, Janice Storley, Nadia Wold, Lois Steele, Lisa Aquat, Jerry Warden, Linda Tollefsrud, Grady Lundgren, Paul Morkin, Ron and Dawn Stone, Lori Hagen Jensen, Lucas A.J. Wistie, Mary Amundsen, Anna Bingham Yeris, Rachel Krensky, Sharon Onstead Johnson, Mavis Johnsrud, Sawyer Oaks, Jennifer Wedman, for all those affected by the fire this week, and for all those we now name in our hearts. Lord, in your mercy, receive our prayers. Bless all who gather to worship on this holy day. Be present at our tables and celebrations, and watch over those who travel. Sustain charities, outreach ministries, and food pantries that give generously to people in need. Lord, in your mercy, receive our prayers. Pondering the mystery of eternal love made flesh in Jesus Christ, we commend all for whom we pray to the mercy of God. Amen. And now may the peace of Christ be with you always. You may share that peace with one another. Sing we know well to greet the newborn king. Now well new ballet this new know well we sing. Waking from sleep this wonder did I see. In a garden there there was a beautiful tree. Whereupon I spied a rosebud opening. No well new
you guys are more on the ball than I am. I guess after three services in less than 24 hours, I skipped <laughs> over a few things. So um, let's actually do the Nicene Creed, confess our common Christian faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We only do it a couple of times a year, and it's a beautiful creed. Um, so please stand as you are able. The Nicene Creed can be found on the inside front cover of your red hymnal. I better find it too. Let's confess our faith. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He is spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray. Generous God, you have given us life, this community, and these gifts of the earth that become the meal of your grace. Move in our hearts that we might use your gifts to bring hope and blessing wherever we go. Through Christ our Lord. Amen.
In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it, and he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And again after supper, Jesus took the cup, and when he had again given thanks, he gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. may be seated. Love has come, God's love for all people. Come and eat, for Christ invites you. We are going to do communion. Everybody is welcome to come to communion. If you are not old enough or you don't feel to uh, want to take communion today, you're welcome to come up for a blessing. We're going to go side by side. So we're going to start with the north side and have you guys come through, and then we'll go to the south side.
you are able. Emmanuel, God is with us. You grace us with life and breath and give us bread for the journey. Send us out in service to this world that you love, telling the amazing news of your coming to be Savior and Lord of all. Amen. people of God receive God's blessing. Grace from God's own heart, peace from the child in the manger, and strength from the spirit of life be blessings for you today and forever. Amen. Christ is born. Go tell it on the mountain and everywhere. Thanks be to God. Our final hymn is number 288, Good Christian Friends Rejoice. Just, just do it, just okay. do it.